This is Jen Finelli, MD, and I am here to help you learn to become a superhero. Today we're going to talk about the how. Last time we talked about the what and the why of your becoming a superhero. Now we're going to look into the how you finance it, right? So last time we talked about how you find your own superhero calling, and I would like to reinforce from that video that the need is the call. It's not just about what you feel or what you want, but where you see the need and how you can fill it. You have to be realistic about whether or not you can fill that need or whether you need to enlist other people to do so. But I like the idea that nothing is impossible, that you will either fix the problem or find someone who can. However, you are just one person, so you need to look objectively at your skills and attributes just like we did on the workbook for last video and see what would be a good calling for you. How we can, what need are you most equipped to fulfill and what information or skills do you need to better fulfill it? Okay, so that was our lesson last time. So a lot of people who really want to do good don't have money. Um, as you remember from Isabel's story, she had nothing and she wanted to take care of 75 orphans. Batman has never gotten that close to that many, and he only has taken in four, okay? Um, five? Six? He's taken in a, in a couple. There there have been four Robins and one or two Batgirls that did kind of rely on him for sustenance. Um, anyway, <laughs> but not 75, because um, Barbara Gordon had her own pa parents and family. Um, yeah. All right, Batman. <laughs> so how are you going to, you don't have money. Money is a superpower. Batman has a lot of money. Um, how do you get money, right? So the first thing I want you to do is look at what marketable skills you do have. And you might be young and think, I have none. Um, what languages do you speak? How good are you at writing? Look around for what you can do. Are you strong? How are you? And that's going to be how you start thinking. Like, is there a second thing that you can pick up? Right. Um, I want to introduce you to a couple of passive income ways to make money. Um, and then a couple of active income ways. Um, all of these take a little bit of time to actually build and set up so that they fund your endeavors. Um, for a little bit of background, I have been saving up for my Paraguay clinic um, for over 10 years. My initial goal was that I needed to start with $50,000 in order to go down there and start the clinic. The goal was 50 k by 2023. So um, initially, I felt like I was very far short of that goal. I looked at my TSP this year and realized I do have, um, because I've been saving, I have more money than I thought I did. So that's the first thing, is sit down and look at your savings. Sit down and look at, can how much can I put away for this dream every now and then? Maybe the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a bulletproof vest, depending on what your goal was, right? What, your, what superhero work you're going to do. Um, if you're going to try to you know, get bad guys online so that you can then submit that information to the cops, um, you know, like child pedophiles and things like that. Um, if you're going to try to stop those kind of people, well, maybe you need to save up for a VPN for good kind, good computer um, skills, protection, and access, right? So how are you going to do that? Um, so look at, so what you need to do is first sit down and make an itemized list of what kind of things you need to be able to start helping people in the way that you want to help them. I needed a medical degree, um, which I couldn't afford and didn't have. Um, so I, you know, I joined the military because I wanted to help people and get the training in these more difficult environments. I wanted to help people who were doing something extreme and um, that they considered important. Um, and so that was going to give me extra training. I also joined the military because there's a lot of better austere medicine training. So not just the emotional training of taking care of heroes, but the, um, you know, because as I said last time, my mission has been, how do I take care of the heroes? Um, I either want to inspire them with you know, writing and things like that, or I want to physically take care of them. That's my mission. Uh, my mission is to kind of take care of and protect the healers. Um, or the heroes. And so in order to do that, I had to get the degree. 
Um, so in order, in, in addition to getting the emotional experience that I needed and getting the uh, physical experience in a little bit more of austere or operational medicine, um, my other goal was um, how do I, I need money and the military will pay for medical school. I don't recommend the military as a goal for paying for medical school unless you are very ready to be in the military. Um, there are other options. There's a National Health Service Corps option. I mean, there's options for, um, there are certain ways to pay back loans. Um, the military is an option. I'm not sure that it's an option I would recommend for that, um, unless you have these other goals in mind as well. Because <clears throat> the military can actually also change uh, the direction of where your specialty and so forth is. So if you have your heart set on a certain specialty, don't, don't do the military. Okay. Um, so anyway, those are, these are your, your thoughts and your things that you, you, you gotta, you, you thinking about, um, is one, start saving up and two, look at how long-term your goal is going to be. Um, I've always wanted to become a superhero when I grow up and I certainly can't say that I am one, uh, yet, but I've had the opportunity to help a lot of people. Um, and I've even had people come up to me and say I saved their life. So I have had an opportunity to do pretty awesome things and it is still my goal to continue be growing to be a superhero every day. And I didn't have money for these kind of things. I didn't have money for college. So during college, I, um, picked up work study jobs. Um, and, um, I took out loans, right? Loans is the least desirable option for financing your superhero journey. Loans and being an indentured servant, which are the things that I did, right? Because I did the military and I did loans. Um, that's the least desirable option. It's better if you can own yourself. Um, and so for that reason, I would recommend looking into business. You may remember that last time I mentioned, um, that the real goal of college is that you come out and start your own business, not that you go and work under somebody's corporation or government thumb, right? You want to be free. You want to be independent. That's the whole superhero aesthetic is it's outside of the traditional means of doing good, right? So in order to be able to really sustain that superhero aesthetic, you need to look at financial sources that are going to make you free. But Jen, there are no jobs where I am. I can't pick up work-study jobs to help pay for college. Well, that is the power of starting your own, your own business, is you are making the jobs. But Jen, doesn't it require capital to start a business? Not a freelancing one. So it depends. Um, so first, I'd like you to take a look at Upwork.com. That's U-P-W-O-R-K.com. Or... <laughs> Um, what? What was that? What did you say? Don't make fun of me. Um, Uniform, Papa, Whiskey, Oscar, Romeo, Kilo, dot, you should know how to spell com. Okay, so that's upwork.com. Um, there are so many different skills that people are looking for to pay for, um, and you can use those to make money. Okay, so that's that's one thing to look for. You just got to apply like crazy. Be willing to apply, 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 apply to job after job and be willing to start with some lower jobs. Um, make sure you get five stars on those. Make sure you get recommendations. Put those in your resume and keep applying. Okay, um, and these are online jobs you can do at a distance and you may have to educate yourself a little bit. There's so many resources if you have internet, which you do since you're looking at me. Um, there's so many resources to get you skills. One of the most popular kinds of jobs on Upwork is coding because everyone needs a coder. So if you can teach yourself a basic coding language enough to make an app or a program, you can earn money. So you need to, you, you can sit down, you can read a Python book, you can sit down and read a book on C++, like sit down. That is a marketable skill that everybody needs. Okay. Um, another fairly high quality skill um, is data mining. There are a lot of large corporations that need somebody to sit down and get a bunch of data for them in stuff that's kind of boring and mind numbing. That or virtual assistant work. Um, they may not have time for to go through profile after profile after profile getting this data. You have to be willing to do some kind of boring work to pick up these side gigs, but it is worth it, right? Um, and see how much you can make, okay? I used to work freelancing with an organization called Scripted. 
www.thepeopleshop.com. Um, they're a little more difficult to apply for. You have to have pretty good writing skills, um, but they're another option that you can go through. Um, and they pay people to, uh, you know, write blogs basically for corporations. Okay. But you're still an independent contractor. People can't control you. You ultimately are going to decide whether you want to be there or not and what you want to be and what your hours are and everything else like that. So those are things to think about. There's another website called Elance, um, another good option. When I was a freelancer, I found um, that it was challenging sometimes just using those kinds of sites to get uh, work. Now, there are other options for you and what you can do is you can start looking you just have to be clever about how you look for your clients um, so when you're looking for clients search for don't search from your point of view don't search um, so for example if you're an artist and you're looking for um, writers looking for book covers don't search where can I find writers looking for book covers? Search the other way. Search where can I find artists? Search from their point of view so that you know where they're looking and then you can get in there and put in that work. I actually have a, um, a huge list of all of 16 different places where artists can put up their portfolios so that writers can find them. Um, and then a bunch of different Facebook groups and other things like that. Um, so that's the, uh, the next thing. Do a Google search to find the places where you need to put yourself um, to get the jobs that you need for freelancing. So first you check these big th groups like Upwork, Elance, all these other things. Then go through Google or Bing, whichever search platform you use, um, and look for from the point of view of your target audience and find out where they are hanging out okay um, then the next thing that you can do um, after that after is is look on social media groups look for groups on Facebook um, you can sometimes find forums on reddit uh, reddit tends to be more difficult to to navigate in that way um, but sometimes you can find places where writers or you know where people are seeking certain things okay um, you can also search for, you know, just online jobs and distance jobs in general on places like Indeed, Monster, other things like that. Um, but a lot of those listings tend to be a little bit old, okay? But that's something that you can look for. So hustle. Find places where you can get freelance gigs, okay? That's going to be your first step in trying to finance your superhero journey. Um, the next thing that you can do for trying to to pick up money um, right in addition I've mentioned I've mentioned doing things like I did like uh, the, the working and picking up extra jobs um, but instead of doing those things or freelancing you can start selling your own product you can start your own thing just from scratch um, drop shipping is an option for that um, when you're drop shipping you're gonna need to and that drop shipping just means that you promote a product you put together it's like what I'm doing for my tingles tea store right um, you see where a supplier has a product that you believe in and you get that product to other people okay so I have a tea store um, I don't package the tea myself the supplier does that and the supplier sends the tea to the people the tea never comes to me the tea goes directly from the supplier to the people but my tea store is this you know virtual online place where people can get all those teas and find all those teas and then they can buy them um, I don't do any of the packaging or, or shipping or any of that so that means that from anywhere in the world I can run this tea store Okay, um, this is something I set up. This does take a little bit of capital, but not a lot compared to what a normal business um, would cost. Because of the way my drop shipping arrangement is, um, it's not like Oberlo or some of these other apps. Um, I am drop shipping directly with the with my supplier, so that I don't have to buy any inventory up front. Oberlo and some of these other um, sites sometimes you have to buy inventory up front, and then you have to sell it off. That requires more you know, obviously more money. This is kind of more like almost print on demand, excuse me, almost more like print on demand where like the person orders and then the thing is sent and then I pay um, the supplier after the, the person has paid me, right? Um, and so you can look into that. So I pay $35, $45 a month um, to keep the site running. It's $27 on, on Shopify um, and $15 for the special drop shipping software that I use, which is um, PO Simple Orders, Simple Orders PO. 
um, which which kind of automates a lot of the process. Um, and that's uh, that's not a lot, but it just means that I have to cover those costs. I have to make sure that I cover those costs every month um, in sales. So um, that's that's a way to get started is in something like drop shipping. I'm still at the very beginning, so I'm not going to make a video entirely about drop shipping yet, um, because I'm kind of experimenting and figuring out how viable this is. But certainly, it's something that's worked for a lot of people. Um, my little brother used to make a bunch of side money by getting um, his uh, uh, he would he would he would buy books real cheap from people and then sell them off more expensive to other people right so hustle find things that you can buy and sell maybe you can't sell in your area but maybe you can sell online okay is something to look at um, if you're in certain areas there are going to be business opportunities that don't require a ton of startup things like vending machine business um, where you have the vending machine you just have to pay keep it stocked and so forth um, it takes maybe one or two days you know a couple of hours a week to keep the business running the upfront capital you have to buy the vending machine right which that can be that can be costly co costly um, but it's not going to be a ton it's not going to be like buying a franchise or buying another business so what I'm trying to say to you is like you can start off working um, and running a little tiny business um, you can even start making things and selling them on Etsy okay etsy.com is an option um, ultimately uh, when you're making things you're going to want to have your own store apart from Etsy but Etsy is a great way to start um, my husband is making uh, mugs and bowls at etsy.com slash shop slash ceramic mugs and bowls all, all one all together um, and it's been really good for us so far um, he's made a couple thousand dollars this year um, and he's just started out like just brand new but he's very good at what he does so you have to be realistic you be like is the thing that I'm making realistic and something that people want to buy okay um, but there are people who will and, and if you're in a low income country do not despair there are people in wealthy countries who will pay a lot for authenticity, who will pay a ton of money because something says it was made in Africa by an African artisan. And these are people who don't even know that Africa is a continent and not a country, right? Who see it all as one. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, there are all kinds of people who will buy because you have, because it says it was made by you in this way, right? Um, you know, whether it's your artwork or whatever it else, else it is you do. So there are ways you can make money with things like Etsy, things like Upwork. Um, so, you know, things where you're selling something. Okay. So look into what you're selling. T-shirts is another business opportunity that you may not have considered. Um, and this is great because, um, with a lot of t-shirt websites, you don't have to touch the product. Um, I'm talking things like Teespring, Redbubble, um, other things like that, where you could run your business from somewhere far away. You never touch the product. They print it. They send it. You just have to make something beautiful um, and then you have to market it. Marketing is a tough thing, right? You have to get people to buy um, and that might be and that kind of requires finding where the buyers are and that that can be tough. Um, but once you, you know, so what, whatever it is you're setting up to sell, you set up the product, you make the arrangements after you have made sure there's a demand for it. Like who is going to buy this and how am I going to get it to them, right? Um, I was directing, I've been directing my tea business more towards um, marketing uh, to people who like ASMR. It's Tingles Tea, it's Tingly Tea, um, Tingles Tea dash, Tingles dot, excuse me, tingles-t.myshopify.com, right? Proceeds help to support my clinic. Um, and I let people know that up front, but the tea itself is really good quality. I was going to market it, and I'm currently still marketing it primarily to people who like ASMR because they like relaxation type stuff. So within that market, that is where I am pushing. And the way I'm doing that is by working with influencers. Influencer marketing is going to be more powerful than ads every single time. So if you can get some person who has a big YouTube channel, a big Instagram following, something like that, to promote your product, um, that's going to make a big difference. And maybe they do that with an affiliate link, right? Um, and that brings us to affiliate marketing, which is another way you can make money. If you can build up a following on 
Instagram, YouTube, anywhere like that, you can make money based on how big your following is. Now, of course, this is going to take some time. They have to get interested in you. People have to want to spend time with you. Um, so it's something you have to work on. In influencer marketing, like anything, is a skill. But companies will either pay you up front to directly promote a product. That's called a sponsorship. Um, or you can do affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is where you have a link. And um, with that link, there's tracking data on it. So anytime someone buys using your link, the company knows and they can pay you from that link, from the sales that you have referred. Okay, so um, so that's affiliate marketing is fantastic. Most companies do affiliate marketing. You are certainly welcome to join my affiliate marketing program. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll try to include a link in the description below. Um, but um, actually, you can just just go to tingles-t.myshopify.com. Um, scroll all the way down at the bottom, there should be a place where you can join. Um, let's just check and see that that's still true because that may not be true anymore. Um, but there should be a link at the bottom where you can look into joining my affiliate program. Um, there is not, it is gone. It is, it is not there anymore. Um, I will include the link in the description of this video. Um, but you can make money every time you refer somebody to buy my tea. Um, I will give you a percentage of the profits. Um, and all that takes is an internet connection. All that takes is for you to be able to email people about it, to talk to people about it. Maybe you start a tea blog. Maybe you join different Facebook groups and you just kind of casually talk about the tea. Uh, maybe you start a Facebook page about tea and you post to it every day. You say neat things about tea and then people eventually buy from it, right? That's affiliate marketing. That's where you get money selling somebody else's product. Um, to be most successful at that, you need to have a, a blog, a website, um, an email list, a Facebook group, something, or an Instagram page or a YouTube channel that's within the topic of the blog, right? So, or in, within the topic of the product. So if you have a, you know, YouTube that's all about um, hammers and power tools, probably it's going to be a little more difficult for you to sell tea to that audience. Um, I guess it's possible. But um, any, anybody can sell anything to anybody. But you need to, it's going to be stronger if you can build up a following and do it organically so you're not spamming. So you're not just saying, buy this, buy this, buy this. Because nobody wants somebody who's just telling them to buy stuff all the time. Um, so you got to be cool about it. You got to introduce other cool things. Um, but there's, but there's ways, right? Affiliate marketing is fantastic. Um, if you affiliate with a big company like Sharper Image, they have a lot of really expensive gear and you can do expensive, you know, reviews on why this is a really cool product um, and get people to buy it. Again, you need to build a following. You need to build a blog. You need to build um, a Facebook page, Instagram page, um, and that can really, really help with your affiliate marketing. And you can even build pages that are geared towards that thing. You can have many different pages. You could have an Instagram page that's all about tea, and every day you post different pictures of tea, and then you include your affiliate link, right? And you could have another Instagram page that's, um, you know, all about coffee or whatever, um, or all about gear. As long as you're posting interesting content to it regularly, and you you will get followers and then you will get sales, right? And it's not that easy. It takes time. It takes work like anything else. But these kind of passive, these um, strategies are called passive income because they can earn money for you while you're sleeping, uh, right? Somebody could be clicking on that link and buying stuff while you're sleeping. Um, and I have the same kind of deal with my books. Um, people who would like to affiliate with me um, on my books um, and who would like to get money every time they sell one of my books um, they can just email me. You email Jen at becominghero.ninja um, and I will and say, hey, I'd be interested in selling your books. Um, I actually give 50% profit of that. So if you sell a $20 audiobook, you get $10 for every audiobook you sell, right? Um, so, you know, you can get money that way and it's always win-win for you and win-win for the company. So affiliate marketing is really, really cool. Um, and, and it's definitely something you, sh you can consider um, while you're making up your passive income strategy for how you're going to save up for superhero work. Um, you have to diversify. You have to have many sources of income, which is difficult if you're in an area where you're, you're struggling to even have one. Um, so what you got to do is you got to try a lot of different things. Try, um, and you got to keep trying at them, right? Get on Upwork. Put yourself on, put yourself on every freelancing site you can. Get a skill that you can 
market, right? And, and learn the skill online. Um, if you learn online how to fix things, you can set up a little computer repair shop. If you learn online how to program, you can set up a little pro, you know, a little programming site on the website um, or online where you can get customers. Um, it's all about what you are willing to learn on your own. There is so many, so much free information out there on the internet now that you can get to make you successful. Okay, so when you're looking at financing your superhero strategies look at some of these things I've mentioned. I've mentioned, I think, like six different strategies and options, um, you know, from starting your own business to freelancing. Um, there are, and there, there are a lot of different ways to make money online. You can even, you know, Google search how to make money online. There are many, many, many ways. Those are just the ways that I have used, tried, and that I know they work. I know that I can make some money off of them with little to no um, investment. Again, time it takes a lot of work. You have to really put in the time to market these things and build up a following. The best way to do that is with something like a blog, something like a YouTube, something like an Instagram, where you're posting about the topic regularly. And as you post about the topic regularly, people interested in that topic will come to you. And that's the best way to start. I, that has been the most successful way I have found to make money online, is to have my own following that I built by posting about this topic that people were interested in. Um, and as you become kind of an expert in that niche, people will pay you. And that doesn't take long. It took me only a year and a half to start making money, not even a year and a half. It took me a year, less than a year to start making money on YouTube, starting from nothing. And anyone can do that. If you have a video camera and you're willing to learn and get better at what you do, you can do it. I use my cell phone. I record all my ASMR videos on my cell phone. Um, I have used a lot of clever free software plugged into my computer and everything like that. But my editing software um, for the first several months, PowerDirector, it was free. Um, I now pay $4 a month for it, um, which can be a lot of money in some places. It's worth it though, because I am making more than $4 to cover that. So my YouTube now not only pays for itself, but it's starting to be able to pay for other things. Um, it's still not a ton of money. I'm only making a dollar a day um, on YouTube, on my ASMR channel, um, from advertising. But again, I'm diversifying my income sources. I do affiliate marketing, and that gets me a lot more money. Um, I just need, I really just need a couple clicks a month to make this a, a saleable thing um, that is good passive income that keeps me going. So I mentioned that loans are generally not a good option because you're beholden to somebody else. I would make an exception for that. I would say to um, if you are in a place where it is just very difficult to get capital for you have an idea of how you're going to fund your superhero business or your superhero work. Um, maybe it's that computer business. Maybe something else. Maybe you're going to be real clever and you're going to find trash at dump sites that you can clean up, fix, make beautiful, and sell. Right? There are people who do that. Um, whatever you're going to do, um, you may need some initial capital. If you do, I would say look into Kiva, kiva.org and other microloan financing options. Kiva is spelled K-I-V-A or Kilo Indigo Victor Alpha, okay, dot O-R-G dot org, okay, um, and they help people to find, to get financed um, who are doing small business opportunities, especially in countries um, like in the majority world where there isn't a ton of income um, and you may not have the initial capital to start something. So they have a list, they can be a little difficult to navigate, but they have a list of partners worldwide that's everywhere from Liberia to Vietnam to the United States, um, loan partners who will do small loans of a couple, a little bit of money um, that will be supported or financed by somebody um, somewhere else that you can then use to make make money basically you can then use that um, and then when you pay that back that money goes back into the Kiva system and goes to help somebody else also in need so it's really cool because it cycles through um, so maybe you need $25 to buy your first you know several bags of rice for your little field restaurant that you're gonna do okay whatever it is you're gonna do to try to earn money as a side hustle um, they 
they can kind of help you out. I know it may feel like it's impossible to make money, especially if you are in an area where you have very little or nothing. Um, I ate out of the trash in medical school and I went and got, uh, when they were done with the surgical practice um, animal parts, I actually took those home and cooked them, okay? That is how little um, money I had. And I understand that you may have that, and I understand that I was very privileged um, and that I had those things available to me. I mean, I was in medical school. Obviously, I have some, um, you know, I have some privilege and blessing that I was able to be there, right? So I understand that you may have even less than that. Um, hopefully, you don't have, you know, hopefully, you aren't in a terrible, terrible situation, but whatever situation you're in, you have to think beyond impossible and you have to start thinking what is it I want to achieve and how am I going to achieve it not this is impossible this is impossible this is impossible that's gonna get you nowhere Isabel didn't start her orphanage thinking this is impossible okay um, George Washington Carver had nothing ended up founding institutes and making um, you know enormous scientific uh, trends by taking things that other people thought were worthless things like the peanut and turning it into what is now you know a multi-million I think billion dollar industry okay take things that other people don't see as valuable and find a way to make it make money for you okay um, so Kiva is an option if you want to do loan things so what I want you to do is I want you to sit down now I want you to go through all of the different strategies we've talked about and next to each one and just to practice coming up with ideas next to each one I want you to come up with an idea of how you would do it so sit down look at affiliate marketing look at what products you could be passionate about what you would sell and how you would do it I want you to write a plan for each one even if you're not going to complete that plan um, I, because I want you to practice the business thinking I want you to practice coming up with strategies that can make you money so and I mean a complete strategy I don't want you to just say next to it for affiliate marketing I could sell microphones no I want to know how you're gonna sell microphones I want to know are you gonna establish a YouTube channel that's about tech review are you going to establish an Instagram that's got cool pictures um, and little sound clips? I want to know, and even if you're not going to actually do it again, I want to know how you would do it. I want you to write out the different ways that you would make that strategy work. So you write down who your target market would be, how you would build the infrastructure, whether that's a YouTube channel and Instagram or, um, or whether you have something better, like maybe going door to door, what is it, whatever idea you have for, I want you to write the what, why when how okay of every single thing um <laughs> yes there is another w there is a fifth w what is it and how is not a w but it has a w at the end right what why when where what why when where how that's your five don't question my counting um so anyway you're gonna go ahead and write those out um, for each thing, how you would do those things, what you would do, where, why, why, why would you be good at it? And I want you to write all that out. Okay. Um, what is called a smart goal is something that we'll go over at a, at another time, but it's something you can use while you're doing this exercise. Um, is and 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 we'll, we'll go into how you make smart, intelligent goals. But some aspects of it are that the thing has to be measurable. So you need to be able to put a number on how your goal. You know how you would set that goal um, you need to be able to put a time limit so you need to put how many of the thing and what time it would be done but it's basically easier to just go through the W's because that's that's the same okay um, so you go ahead and put that out there um, and I want you to do that for every single idea we've mentioned in the video even like vending machine business even if you don't have vending machines near you I want you to think about how you would go and purchase one if that was something you would do and where you would put it what neighborhoods what wealthy neighborhoods um, in your what wealthier er, neighborhoods in your area where would you put the vending machines things like that every single idea that I've mentioned I want you to sit down and write down possibilities how you would do these things using the internet okay um, how you would get paid and everything else like that so forth um, and it can be tough if you don't have very good online financing options I totally understand that um, I totally understand that in some countries there is a very large limit on how you can deposit money into a bank account which means that you may have to find alternative means of funding until you can make money with the internet which is insane and not fair um, 
but where there is a will there is a way and so i want you to write down the ways and the hows okay how you how you would save up how much to be able to get the bank account to be able to do internet banking um, in paraguay for example in a lot of other countries in most african countries um, banking is not very expensive and you can get a bank account and do in, and be earning money on the internet right away right with as little as ten dollars down okay um, and I know that that can seem like so much money. That can be half of what you earn for an entire month. Um, you can make money on the internet. You just have to be very cautious about saving. You have to be like, okay, I'm going to save this much for me for now. I know $10 is so much for certain situations, right? And that's again why Kiva is a good option. Um, Kiva is an option as a loan. Maybe you can get the $10 put that down, get the bank account, and then go from there. Go earning money on, on the internet using PayPal and other kind of um, products that are available to you. Um, so it takes time, but it's not impossible. And you need to not think of the think in terms of the impossible. Again, um, Isabel funded her first part of the orphanage by asking around, getting some bags of milk, and then selling half of the milk. Um, there are ways. Where there's a will, there's a way. Don't be discouraged. Um, and especially if you have any kind of faith, you're going to need it. You're going to need your faith um, to help carry you through these situations. But go ahead and do that practice because I want you to practice. I want you to rewire your brain into thinking in terms of possible instead of thinking in terms of impossible. And as you're going through that, think about which one of these, okay, I hit on something here. I hit on one that I could actually do. Let me try this. Okay. So again, go back through the video every single idea that I've mentioned, think about how you could do that. Do some research. Look around on the internet for companies that have high, um, you know, high earning affiliate marketing products. And these are things that are going to, going to help you out. Okay. You have your work set out for you. You can fund your dreams. You just have to be very aggressive about it. You have to try many things. You're going to try a lot of things and a lot of them will fail until you hit on the one the one thing that works and then you hit on another thing that works and another thing but you got to keep trying all you have in this life is time that's the only thing that's guaranteed to you and it's only guaranteed to you for a certain period so do start don't wait to start your superhero work until you have the money do as much as you can without the money um, and see like what little way right so maybe if your goal is to help out the homeless in your area Maybe you don't have the money to bring out food yet, right? You still have to save that up and save money to get the food that you can share out. But at the very least, you can walk around, you can find out what people need, you can talk with them, you can show kindness, um, and you can kind of learn about people's lives. You can start now, you can start helping out now, um, you can spend time with people, you can, you know, be, you can be there, um, and you can be there and listen, you can offer to be a listening ear. Um, and I know that seems weird. It seems weird to go out with nothing, but you may have more um, than you know you have, and you have to do re market research anyway. Um, so maybe you don't ha you're not able to buy the food yet, but maybe you can start finding someone who can partner with somebody who can help you buy the food, and then you go out and distribute. Go around and ask, and keep knocking on doors, and don't take no for an answer. You have to understand this world is built on gravity and gravity makes it so that things always fall it's very easy for things to fall and it's very hard to build but it's worthwhile to build okay so get out there try some of these funding options and put in the comments other funding options that you think are useful when you're trying to start from nothing and there are no job opportunities in your area yeah i'd like to hear like to hear about it I also recommend that you check out channels like Roberto Blake's. Um, I think that he is a fantastic option uh, for learning how to make money on your own, especially using the internet. Um, and I hope that you'll check out some of the other sources that I have recommended. Um, there are so many ways to make money on the internet. And I'm telling you, it really doesn't matter where you are. Um, African Cosa ASMR, um, or I'm, I'm going to there's a click there. There's a click. It's like, 
there's a click there but she does um she is making money now um, and she just started her channel I think about a year and a half ago uh, because people are so interested in hearing about South African culture right you may have something that is super marketable that you don't even know about if you speak English and you have a culture that is not in the United States people want to hear from you they want to hear what you eat in that culture they want to hear what you do they want to hear about your language they want to hear about your holidays you can make a YouTube channel about that. You just have to be willing to set the camera down somewhere nice instead of carrying it everywhere so that it jitters. Um, you have to be willing to set up as nice as you can. This setup is a sheet and a phone camera. I do have a nice microphone. I did save up for a nice microphone. My nice microphone um, is cheaper than most people's nice microphones though. Okay, um, so you know eventually you can save up for stuff but um, African Kosa ASMR she did everything on her phone for the first year before she got a nice microphone. She earned money first and then she got the microphone, right? And she's making money doing this. She has so many subscribers. This is going to be, a, I mean, this is going to be a huge extra source of income for her soon. Um, and she's growing far faster than I am because she has an interesting culture that people want to hear about. Okay. People want to hear about what you are doing. So um, if, even if you're in a kind of low income area, find the thing that's unusual about you and share it with the world um, or that some people would think is unusual not unusual for you but maybe unusual to the mainstream viewer on you know the internet on YouTube right you can make money um, you just have to get out there and be known um, and so get out there put your name out there put your face out there get out there get out there let people know you're here um, and and what you have to offer and the more you let people know you have something good to offer, the more likely they are to give you money. Okay, that's how that works. So keep working on it. Keep working on it. Um, I believe in you. It is possible. It's not, um, it's not like this pie in the sky thing that only happen, only rich people start their own businesses. No, um, most really good, you know, I mean, I don't know how to say most, but the small businesses that have the most interesting stories are the ones that are started by people who have nothing starting out um, and that's and why do we love those stories because those stories show the human spirit triumphing against something that's very difficult poverty it is very difficult to make a difference when you don't have the means to make that difference um, I really think it's unfair that a lot of times the people who most need to be educated on business and taking care of themselves and taking finance into their own hands those are the people who don't get educated we teach rich kids about business and finance um, and poor kids we tell them to go get a construction job that sucks that sucks and so that's something that I want I want to take the information that the rich kids get and I want to give it to you and I want you to have that information um, because knowledge is power and so once you understand that knowledge is power you can go out on the internet you can find the knowledge that you need to make yourself successful get yourself a marketable skill that people can't say no to right I did medicine it took me 10 years um, plus Get yourself a marketable skill people can't say no to even if it's like mechanic plumber electrician those are there's some aspect of those things that you can learn online as well okay so get yourself a marketable skill get yourself out there so that people know you're there figure out what's interesting about yourself and promote it right let people know you're there okay and save your money as best you can and don't give up Okay, and and you will be able to fund your dreams. It is not impossible. It is not. Uh, I you know I I see I sincerely I'm I'm a believer right so I sincerely believe in the power of prayer. Um, depending on who you're praying to, because if you're praying to someone who's not going to help you, then then that sucks. Um, so I I believe in that power, but I also believe in the power of planning of sitting down and thinking about it. Um, don't wait for somebody else to come rescue you. Don't wait for the world to change and get better. It's not going to. You have to get out there. Um, you can't wait for somebody wealthy to come along and fund your dreams because, you know, nine out of 10 times, it's not gonna happen because wealthy people are busy doing their own thing and they don't necessarily care about you. And that's kind of the number one thing you have to realize is you can't don't ask permission you can't wait and ask permission for the world to give you what you need to help it you have to go out and take it don't wait I believe in you 
see you next time.